And what, what's life like on an Aboriginal mission? Uh, it's tough. Um, you know, I've, I'm fortunate enough that I, I grew up with, you know, a family, um, loving parents, but, um, you know, there's alcohol, drugs, um, you know, fights that my dad would be called up for to go break up. Um, and these are just these men, women, um, you know, partners. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't unusual to walk to walk around and seeing um, women with black eyes. Um, you know, I remember going to school and we were, what fifteen, sixteen, and girls were coming to school with black eyes, and. You know, I, I'd never seen anything like that before, but um, no one questioned it, which um, I guess it's the norm there, but um, yeah, it's not the way you know, people would li- people, people live, I guess. What's, um, have you had a lot of experience with Aboriginal missions? Yeah, yeah, so we, um when I was young, we lived, or we got moved into town into West Palmer, so we had Cabbage Tree Island. And when they wanted to start moving everyone off Cabbage Tree Island out of the mission, they moved them into West Palmer. So they pretty much just made another little Aboriginal mission close to the town. Sorry, I just got a message. Yeah, so I was going to bring that up. We, apparently, we had no sound at the start. So okay. we, we might want to bring up again. And I thought for the viewers who don't know, they might not know that Willie Tonga was a, a rugby league player for the majority of his life. Um, okay, so organism. apologies. we lucky we, f- we found out. Mr. Jack Whitaker, who's actually Rob's dad, was the one that messaged me saying there's um, no sound on the podcast. So I have Willie Tonga with us, Robert Whitaker, and Eli Hedges. <coughs> apologies for, for that. Oh, good. Will. Um, so now we do have sound? Yes, we have sound. H- how long ago did we catch the sound? Um, when Dave came. Okay. So we might have missed out about the start, but yeah. Well, we were just re- just now we were discussing with with the Aboriginal missions. So you you we'll, we'll go. We'll, we're going to be here for a while, so we're going to yeah. come backwards and forwards. So what were you saying, Eli? So I was just saying. So what they wanted to do is move everyone off the mission of Cabbage Tree Island and get them do you know I mean start to separate them a little bit, um, so they weren't so segregated up there. So, so you grew up on the mission? No, no. So we, we, I grew up in West Palina. So when they moved everyone, they moved them all to West Palina. And then that just turned into maybe just another mini mission. So it was the place that no one wanted to go. It sort of turned out that West Barna was a, the West Barna Bridge and no one wanted to cross there. Do you know what I mean? So when you went to school and that, the kids would be like, oh, you don't cross that bridge or you don't go, do you know what I mean, there and that. So um, it probably wasn't a, a mission as in um, how Cabo was. Do you know what I mean? Mission managed and had a manager there and, and the people, you know, how they live there. But when they tried to, move them into the town, it sort of created that same sort of, like Willie said, do you know what I mean? I remember the police wouldn't come there. Do you know what I mean? They would, wouldn't dare drive up Brampton Avenue, which was my street, they just wouldn't do it. Um, just regular violence, always drinking, but it was just the norm. It was for us what we what we seen as normal. Um, do you know what I mean? People who had, who had money or had cars, they didn't have jobs. Do you know what I mean? They were, they were doing other shady stuff and that, and that that was I don't know growing up that was normal and, and I think a lot of the missions or or in small communities and that unfortunately it's, it's the case sometimes um your your dad is your dad Samoan Tongan or is your mum Samoan Tongan no my dad's Tongan my okay. mum's Aboriginal yeah all right so because uh, on Wikipedia it said that your dad was Samoan as well really yeah well, I believe you, but... <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a law case. So yeah. We've got to get on to that. Yeah, no, nah, um, full Tongan. Um, he moved over um, early 80s. Um, my mum's from Peak Hill, like just outside of Dubbo. Um, don't know how they met. Oh, you don't know how your folks met? I don't, nah. I, I don't, no, I haven't really asked that many questions. Like, we moved around quite a bit when we were younger. 
And I haven't even asked those questions, like why? Like we moved down to to Victoria, you know, like, um, and my memories of that was like just picking oranges or, you know, um, go out and picking grapes. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure why we moved down there, whether it was because there was no work um, and, you know, there's always, there's always work needed, you know, around those, um, you know, picking oranges or um, grapes or fruit or whatever. You played, you played for Queensland and for Australia in, in rugby league, am I correct? Mm-hmm. Um, what, was, what was that like? What's, what's the difference between origin level and club level football? I don't know if you can explain it. I, What's harder? From at origin and club level? Mm, no, yeah. No, or, no origin. Or international. Yeah. <clears throat> to be honest, I've, I've played harder club games than international games. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, some, you know, we were fortunate enough to, to play against some teams that... Um, you know, weren't as experienced or, um, how do I put it, like, on the same level as as what the NRL boys are. And and Origin, what's that like? Um, that's another level altogether. It's like, it's like you go on in, you, it's like you, you hate that, you hate that person. Where in club level, like, you know, you're competitive, you want to beat them. But in origin, you know, you've got the whole state behind you. And and, and it's real that puts that much pressure on you? Uh, me personally, I, I did, yeah, I didn't feel the pressure. I knew, well, that's a lie. He doesn't the look pressure, like it affects him, the, pressure, the, MIJ, the, like. pressure, the pressure is you've got to do your job. Yeah. If you don't do your job, then you're going you're gonna to potentially lose the game. Because you've got Cam Smith, JT, Darren Lockyer, um, you know, when I was coming through, like um, Petro, you know, those boys, like, they're veterans. They're, like, they're the best of the best. So the pressure's more on, on you to perform for the, for the team. Not, you don't even worry about the, the state or whatever. It's... Um, do figures like that um, push you to to a new level? Like, do they kind of make you want to be better than you are? Like, does it does it draw out that sort of enthusiasm to to play harder? Um, when you when you play in Origin, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Let's like I'm. I remember, um, so I got my call up. Um, we were playing the Roosters back in 2004. Um, Justin Hodges got, he got suspended. And then I got caught into camp. Brent Tate got ruled out medically. And so no one told me that I was playing until I had to work it out. <laughs> like, I, I seriously had to work it out. Like, like Tate, what, do you, what do you mean? There was no, there was no other centers. There was just me and like um, <laughs> Paul Bowman. Um, I didn't even, I honestly didn't even know. Um, no one told me. Um, when did you find out? The next day at training, when <laughs> I'm slotted into left center. <laughs> and how, how how long before the game was that? Um, now that was the next day. That was the next day. But yeah, I'm I'm still thinking that I'm 18th man. Like I'm, you know, just chilling sitting going to be watching the game but still I was buzzing even just to get that call um. Rob you know look when Willie's talking about uh, playing like you say he's playing for Queensland he's got the whole state behind him and, and just the new level when you fight at home versus you fight um, overseas what's that like yeah um, it, it's different it, it is a very different beast you know um a lot of my memories, my, one of the most significant memories I have is fighting in, in Melbourne in that stadium there. When you fought Brunson. When I fought Brunson. And um, to, have, to have like a home crowd 
like roaring and cheering for you. It just it's electrifying. Like you, you can feel it. You does it put more it pressure on you? It it does in a sense that I think I think leading up to it, not 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 of. I think like it might be the same for you. Like in in the moment, you're just worrying about you. You just got to do your stuff. You know, you just you got to do what you're trained for. You just got to do yeah. that. In the lead up, there's more pressure because I'm receiving text messages from every one of my cousins going, "Hey, can we get tickets? Oh, hey, I'm coming down." It's like one bloke I worked with once in like 2005 goes, uh, "Hey, can we get down and <laughs> can, can, can we backstage. yeah can we come watch and stuff or like that?" It, it, and that that adds pressure onto it, you know. Um, not so much once you're there. Once you're there, like it is what it is. Um, you said. You had when I think that we didn't catch the volume, but you said before you had eight, inju- eight, eight surgeries. Eight. You said just you had on my knees, yeah. Just on your knees, yeah. And and you had more surgeries. Yeah, I've had five, uh, five on my right knee, three on my left. What Ricos or would you- uh, medial meniscus and um, just like cartilage repairs, so. My right knee's bone on bone now, um, so I can't really run. Um, I've had both shoulders reconstructed, um, and then another one cleaned out. So three three shoulder operations. Um, I've had my back done. What would you get done on your back? Um, so I had a, a bulging disc, L five S one. Yep. Um, that was pushing up against the nerve and I'd wake up some mornings and um I couldn't I couldn't stand up straight not like I couldn't I couldn't walk um but you know would you get a fuse or what what happened would you do yeah they I just they just went in like shaved it off um shaved the bone that was pushing up against the nerve and um well literally as soon as I woke up out of hospital I could walk like you know when I anesthetic wore off I was I was good I could I could walk straight away uh, pain free how mad is that <laughs> and because like sometimes I've had that once I had a knee surgery once and I was fucked when I walk walked in and then I did the surgery and then I had movement because I hadn't been able to move it like my knee had been locked basically and um then I, I woke up and I could move my knee and I was like Look at me. It makes you think like how bad the damage must have been for for that to happen. Because you know, usually you get a sur- you get surgery and then you're sore and you're stiff and then it starts to come good and you're like, oh, okay, it's all right. But for for you guys to have that instant relief and gratification from the surgery is like, wow. The worst thing is is when you pull out a trainer and they don't think you're legit. Like they think. Oh, well, you, you wrote know, a book on that. What? On that, you pull out of training and people don't think you're legit. <laughs> no one believes me anymore. I've ran out of excuses. I've got a book of excuses. Yeah, like, yeah but it's, it's really like that. You know, you don't want to pull out because, um, you know, what, what the players are going to think or what you think the players are going to think or what you think the coaches are going to think. Um, and I remember the session that I pulled out of. We had to do, um, that's what it's called a, a Bennett test. I don't know if... Yeah. Yeah. So you run 20, 40, 60, run that five times, and I couldn't do it. And um, pulled out, like, oh, here we go. And then I went and saw the physios. I said, um, you know, try to, try to rub me down or whatever, just give me treatment. But they didn't really take me seriously. And then they. That was for your back, yeah? For my back. Yeah. And so I went in and saw the, sur- uh, the surgeon, and he goes, yeah, we need to... Who was the surgeon at the time? Uh, Dr. Waller. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I think he works out of Westmead. Um, yeah, he said, we need, a, we need to operate on this, like, straight away. And so I'm like... Um, it, it sort of... It makes you sort of feel a little bit better because you can say to the trainers, yeah, I'm not... You know, I'm not... Yeah. Yeah. Depending on the coaching staff and the trainers, hey, is how you feel as well. Because I think some coaches will just go tough it up. Do you know what I mean? I don't believe you because I think week in week out they 
they come across excuses all the time. Do you know what I mean? We've got a fitness test, someone's hammy's automatically playing up. We've got contact, my shoulder's feeling a bit sore from the weekend. So it's hard to sort of, do you know what I mean, just which people are, are really injured or which ones. Uh, yeah, my coach at the time was Ricky Stewart, so. Um, Tough nut. Yeah, he's a hard man. Um, and <clears throat> actually, um, before he saw, when, when he just signed, um, I was in Bali and he, I must have been uploading some pictures or whatever. And then I come back um, with new tattoos, like blonde hair. And then he's like, nah, I don't want you. Like, so he rang my manager to try to get me out of that club. And then um, we sat down, had a meeting. He goes, oh, I don't want you here. Like, um, you're going to be playing reserve grade the whole year if you stay. And I'm like, well, I'm not going. And I think at the time they were trying to get uh, Israel Folau. Um I told him, you know, I'm, I'm not going. I'm, if, if that's the case, and, I, and he, if you don't put me in first grade, then I'll, I'll play reserve grade. You know, like I don't, I don't think that I'm, I'm, I'm above playing reserve grade if, if I have to. Um, and then a couple of weeks into training, um, and this is not, I'm not trying to talk myself up or anything. I remember him saying that um, if he was to pick a side um, that day, that I would be the first one he chose. So I, I, I think it goes back to I, I knew how to, I knew when to train hard and how to train hard. But then I knew to how to party as well, which is. Um, the Are story, you a big partier, Will? The story. Now, ever. Let's start with before. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, my first drink was when I was 20, 19 or 20. Well, that's the first time I, um, I had a drink. Um, and I, I always, always said to myself, I'll, I'll never drink. Um, well, I always told myself I'd never drink. And so, um, you know, I got brought down as a 17 year old. Um, and so 18, wasn't going to the clubs. I'd be up till like two o'clock at night, icing my knees, icing my shoulders or whatever, while the other boys are out clubbing. Like, I, that didn't interest me. I just had one focus and that was to make first grade. Um, and then I said, and then I said to myself, I'll drink once, I'm, once I feel that I'm an established first grader. Um, moved to the Bulldogs in 2004. Um, pretty loose crew there. Um, Willie Mason, uh, Rennie Matua, um, Sonny back in back in the day, Sonny Bill, um, Rui Azatasi. We had a yeah, a good group but um, we knew at a party. But at the same time, um, it was like you train hard, play hard, party hard. That was it. You you spoke about Rennie Matua? He's a close friend of yours? Yeah. Um, I watched the thing on the footy show in regards to, mm -hmm. to him. Um, do you want to tell us about that a little bit in, in relation to what you guys said, what you guys spoke about on the footy show that in, in that particular day about, um, I think, Rennie's battle with uh, depression and the suicide attempt? Yeah, so back in 2014, I've, yeah. 2014, um, you know, I, I was sitting up, it would have been 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, um, and we had training the next morning, so I, I don't even know why I was up, like, I, I should have been in bed. Um, anyway, I, I got a text message of um, an unknown number, oh, no, I started getting calls off an unknown number, then I got a text message, hey Will, um, it's Megan, uh, it was Rennie's sister. Like, you know, um, and Rennie had been sending her text messages, you know, saying, um, you know, I love yous, tell everybody I love yous, you know, tell the kids, um, tell his nieces and nephews that I love them. 
and I knew that he'd been out that night and um, he, he was in Manly that night so um, yeah so I started to panic like hearing like when she forwarded the message um, to me I'm thinking it's yeah. when she forwarded those messages I'm thinking yeah this, he's not in a good place um, and so I'm thinking that he wouldn't answer my calls like it was ringing but he wouldn't answer my calls and so I'm thinking like what I'm just sitting there what do I do and then he lived about I lived in Homebush he lived in Para about 20 minutes away so um, threw on some clothes you know drove there as quick as I can to his house um, and then I saw a light I saw his bedroom light on and I heard music playing and so I went I went like so he's got a balcony um, just outside his room and so I was under the balcony yelling up like Ren you know and I heard the music stop and so straight away I knew he was there like so I ran around the building um, but what was what it like at this point you knew he was there you knew the music was on and you you knew, but you already knew something was wrong for sure yeah yeah because of that like and I'd spoken to I'd spoken to Megan did you know he was stuff. suffering depression at the time no nah, not at all and I'd, I'd I've known Ren since 2004 Ren's one of those people that um he's the life of the party he walks in a room and you know brightens a place up like he makes training fun you know like he's one of those people that everybody loves so um you know i'd i'd consider my like Ren was like a brother like you know we were one of like he'd be one of my best mates um so all so reading these messages and then speaking to his sister that night like it didn't make sense um yeah so after after seeing you said the, the music turned off and you ran music, around the music turned off <coughs> I ran around to the front door so it was a like a a unit block um and you need a you need a swipe to get into that door and that door happened to be open and um, and it's never open. So I ran up and went to his unit. Um, went through the door and then went straight to his room. And then So the door was open too? The door was open. Um, and he lived with one of the other boys, uh, Mitch Allgood, um, who was playing with Para at the time. And... Um, I ran, I ran to his bedroom door and when I opened the door, I saw him just at the end of the bed, like literally taking his last breath. So, so when you saw him, he was like, he, had he taken pills or something or? No, he had um, a belt around his neck. Okay. Hmm. And so I push the door open, run in, no, push the door open, see what's going on. And then like, was even thinking about it now, I, I still can't believe that, you know, like the image that I'll, I'm seeing, but he's sitting at the end of the bed, belt around his neck. And so I ran over, tackled him. And then- He was, sit he was sitting up? Yeah, like he was slumped over, like, sort of he was holding the belt okay yeah and around his end but he he was sort of slumped over at the end of the bed and he was losing consciousness and i and I, i've said it before if i had been you know if that door wasn't opened you know downstairs or his unit door or whatever like he wouldn't be here now um you know so yeah it's just I was so fortunate enough to just, I don't know, what made me go to his house that night because I knew he was in Manly. And then just with how everything sort of unfolded, it, it's, um, yeah, it's like a, kind of like a miracle for it to all, all happen like that. But then 
I found out later that um, when the music was playing, he was writing his um, like a, a letter, like a like a goodbye letter. Yeah, he w- he was writing that letter. So um, when he heard my voice, he stopped and then you know must have um, you know grabbed the belt, put it around his neck, and um, try to take his life. Eloy, you said that you knew, um, you know these guys as well because you played football? Yeah, I didn't know them through football. So when I, when I moved down to Sydney, I went and stayed at the Ella Hostel. And then Buddy King was going out with Shannon, who was Willie's cousin at the time. That was in 2000, I think it was your first year over there, 2004, was it? Or... Because I remember three. helping you move yeah, to... 03, 04. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then I helped Willie in that move over to, when you moved over to Maroubra. Yeah, move? 04, yeah. Yeah, I remember I was fascinated by Roy Asatasi. He was just thick, and I remember reading a thing that he, he owned the, the strongest bench press in the NRL or something like that. I remember I was fascinated by him. But I saw him at uh, Bikram Yoga once, and he <laughs> yeah. looked like he had to pay for two people. <laughs> like, he's fucking huge. Yeah, he's, he's one of those fellows that, oh, let's go to Macca's. But he'd order, order a salad. <laughs> That's exactly what happened in London one time. We, we had to play um, World Club Challenge. And, um, you know, all the boys like, yeah, we'll go to Macca's or whatever. And then he, he ordered a salad. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But he, um, yeah, he takes care of his body. He's a monster. Yeah. So, so you, you, your, your relationship there? No, so then not so much. When Willie moved out, I moved into where he was moving in. He was obviously playing at the Bulldogs and that. And I followed him pretty close because my group of friends who was Buddy King and that was going out with his cousin and that at the time. So we always followed his career. Then I became, ended up becoming friends with his brother, pretty good, uh, CC Sione. And then, yeah, later on, knowing them through the knockout. Did you know Rennie? Knockout and that. No, no, I didn't know Rennie. I met him over there at Maroubra and that, but didn't know him. Like, yeah, to talk to her or anything like that. Just introduced a couple of times. In having, knowing now what you know, um, and knowing Rennie the way you knew him, and in retrospect, the things that you learnt, would you say um, you'd be able to see those depressive episodes coming? Not at all. You still even now? Still even now. Um, yeah, he was able to mask it so well. Um, and like he'd have his mood swings, like you know he'd he'd come home from training, and um, you know I I could see, it, but like that's just everybody, you know everybody has off days, and yeah, yeah, um, you don't think much of it because you know I've known you know up until then I'd known him ten years, and so nothing nothing was different, you know, but. Um, you know, I, I guess a lot of the times, you know, people are able to mask it and then, you know, you find out it's too late. Um, because like I said, he was the life of the party. He was, he was always, you know, one of the boys that everyone wanted to be around. Um, What's your relationship like with him now? Uh, <clears throat> he moved to, he moved to Toronto, um, during the year um, and um, I just for like a 12 week um, contract so one of the boys got injured they asked him to go over he went over there they kept him on after that 12 week period just as like a player manager not a player manager like a, a football manager um, and sort of lost lost contact over the past maybe yeah six months or so um but yeah it's um i don't know just life happens i guess yeah is he doing okay he's doing he's doing good as, as far as i know yeah was he was he boxing earlier in the year he did he um he had his he made his uh, professional debut in february i think it was yeah rob how many surgeries you had you had so let, let, let me get let, just let me get this right. You had um, eight on your knees, three on your, that's eleven, twelve with your back. Is that correct? 
Would that be all your surgery? And my jaw. And your jaw? Yeah. Would you break your jaw? Yeah. You got a plate? Yep. 13 injuries. 13 surgeries. Yep. Um, torn bi- torn my bicep twice. Oh, no. Yeah, my bicep. So, so 14, 15 yeah. surgeries. Yeah. I'm sure you could get going if we if you thought about it. But, but but surgeries is not even injuries. I'm talking like so. You had 15 surgeries in your rugby league career. Yeah. How, how's your body now? Because you're 35 years old. You look in incredible shape. But how's your um, body? I have days where I I wake up and you know it takes me about a good 30 minutes to sort of get warmed up. Um, you know I haven't been in a classroom setting since high school. So <laughs> you know. Yesterday was it? We're in the class for 12, 11 hours or whatever it was, and um, you know, like waking up this morning, that was tough. You know, getting out of bed, but um, you know, I made. I don't know. I, I've just. I've got it in my head that you know, to train when, when you least want to want to train, if that yeah. makes sense. So like, I didn't want to train this morning, but. You know, I made sure that I set my alarm for 5.30 and then got myself to the gym. Um, if I had, if I was asked if I'd do it again, I don't think I would. Your football career? Mm. Oh, that's interesting because I, I wasn't, I never even thought that actually. So you wouldn't go through it again? I don't think so, no. Well, because of the injuries or because of other things or? Um, Injuries and other things, just lifestyle. Things, yeah, things outside of footy. Like, um, w- like, what do you mean? Um, things that you get caught up in. Um, you know, I've seen it over the last couple of months that, especially within the NRL, like you're in, you're in such a bubble. You know, like you go to training, and that's your only commitments, and then so. Um, for the rest of the so you could be done by 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock and then you go home you got that much de- you know downtime you don't even know what to do with yourself so um, you know there's, there's so many things that I could have done you know studied um, you know whatever pick up, picked up hobbies but you know I finished the game with um, after 16 years you know playing at the top level with no qualifications, um, you know, nothing behind me. Um, yeah, so is the I support around that better now with the with the players? What's your objective opinion on that? Um, yeah, it's better. I think you know when I was coming through, you'd have people saying, um, you know, you should be should be um, you know studying or you know doing something to you know look after um, to look after yourself when you when you finish because four is not going to last forever but, but when you're that young when you're young you're you know early 20s mid 20s you're not even worried about that you're thinking it's going to last forever um, and so you know but when you're 30 31 that's when you start getting a little bit nervous like what am I going to do? And then, um, because when you're 19, 20, 30 is like fucking miles away, mate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's old. <laughs> yeah. It's old. It's yeah. like, I remember, um, yeah, when, when I came into, when I first went to the Bulldogs, Steve Price, I think he was only 28. And I was 20. But he was old. Yeah, me, especially know? for so, an athlete. Yeah, and so, like... Now I'm 35, um, you know. And you're young, like you're young, like in, in real world life, you just... Yeah, that's how, I, well, that's how I look at it. Yeah. yeah. But my body feels like it's, I'm 50 or 60. Like I'm, I've been told that I'm going to need a knee replacement in my 50s. Which is which incredibly is young. 15 years away. Like that's, that's scary to think about, you know, like I, I, I don't want to be... Like, I want to be able to, you know, wake up and, you know, 
play with my kids and you know kick a footy around. And do you think, without disclosing like what you earn, but what you earned, but like, do you think that the players are financially compensated to the point where it, you could even begin to say that that it was worth it financially? No. I, 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 me personally, I don't think so. I don't. Not even close. But no, not not for, not for what we put our bodies through. Because no. I, I see some of the guys what they earn, and even if you earn, like you know, people it norm, the people hear it and they go, "Oh, four hundred thousand dollars a year," and you think, "Well, that's only a small percentage of the guys that even get that." And mm-hmm. even after you get that, there's like tax, management fees, etc., mm-hmm. da da da, and it's dwindled down to an amount of money per year that you could get if you were like i don't know a PE teacher and did personal training of an evening you know what i mean you probably wouldn't get quite that much but you'd get close to it you know like it's not really that much money and then the amount like 15 surgeries is is, in, is incredible it's not worth it it really isn't and like yeah i've thought about this a lot over the last six months um yeah, I'm not sure if I'd do it again. How do you feel, Rob? Because you're actually at the, you're coming into your very, your, the pinnacle of you now and you're hearing Will talk like this. He's did a, 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 played a collision sport. You obviously do a combat sport. Um, how, what's your take on all that? And wh- how many surgeries and whatnot have you had? Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, this is, this is from a perspective of, of from my career and the company I'm with and why not MMA athletes in, in general aren't looked after financially at all, like at all. And they're not looked after in a, in a sense that um, we're, not, we're not looked after as, as, as people. You know, we're not looked after as, as, as humans. We're, lo- we're, um, we, we're kind of just barely looked after in a sense of like, feeding them, clothing them, making them feel special so that they can make us more money, so that they can go in and do more fights and fight more for us. Can but you explain that, what that means? It's, um, it's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of athletes out there that um, you know, are literally fighting, uh, living fight to fight, you know, and that, 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 that's, that's a horrible way to live, fight to fight. You know, you, with the, the thought, it, it's, it's like equivalent to if like they're, they're making you play football, but they're not going to pay you unless you win the next game and you don't have control mm. over that. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't control the whole game yourself. You know? and then Even though it's an individual sport, that's something people don't get. Like yeah, I can't control the fight. Like I'm going to do my best to take it where I want it to, but shit happens. And this is like, you know, people like, I, I like it because there'll be people that criticise Rob. This is a guy that's undefeated at middleweight and the champion of the world at the moment saying that. You know, like the competitive sport it's it's insane like you wouldn't in, in no other sport would you just get paid you only get paid if you're going to win the next game mm, yeah. imagine that so, sorry yeah. go on. so but you can relate now but think about it in this sense that like not only did they say hey we're not going to pay you if you don't win the next game but you have to win because you can't pay your house the next month if you don't win that mm. game and then you start putting that pressure on guys like that how, how are they supposed to cope how are they supposed to perform their best when you're when you're filling their heads full of this this stuff and this is literally what is going through and you know what to make matters worse there are some guys in the in the ufc at the highest level of the sport that even if they fight and win they still do not earn enough money to live they have to go back to work after it and during the season and pick up pt clients just so that they can afford to to live like is that how they keep the control of they've of it do you know what I mean? uh, well the the the, the, the controls comes from the, the the monopoly of the market they that's where they can manipulate people into taking that fight that they do you know what I mean? 100 percent. well it's, it's, it's not it's not a great deal of money man you, like again like if you earn 100 grand halve that if if you're lucky and you're going to pay that in management fees and taxes and you're 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 putting like a resource that it's your body and your brain up every fight you know what i mean yep. um when i look at it now like i've got a real different perspective like i wasn't good enough to play football for thing or to fight or anything i wasn't like i, I was good i was a good enough athlete that i that was 
crew. It was a good enough athlete <laughs> that <laughs> that, that that the the thought of doing it was was a possibility. Mm. If you if you yeah. know what I mean. But like whenever anything came down to it, I was always like, "No, nah, better go to uni or I better do this <laughs> because I'm not that good," you know. So and I knew that. Like I I was like, you know, people go. Um, no, you can do anything, Fab. I'm like, no, nah, I can't. A fucking junior just ran over me. When, when do you, at what age do you realize that? Like, me personally, um, I was probably about 15, man, because I was always a hard worker. I was, I was always a hard worker. That's young. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no, but I could be dreams. No, no, no. But you know, the problem is, it would have been like this. I would have, I, I, I'm a realist, you know, and I was always like, pretty clued on. And say if I wanted to play football, I'm not built like you, or either one of you. Nah, and and the, the reality was like, that's what it was. And I was always a hard worker, and I always played sport to a decent level. But, and I, and I didn't not enjoy it, but there was a gap. And I, I know the gap, do you get what I mean? Now, my point to that is this. When, when I, um, it's only probably in the last five or six years that it's flipped a lot of the guys that and I have no no thing like well I looked up to them now I don't but it's flipped in the sense of like I deal with some football players or fighters or whatever and they're my age and I was like hey man da 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 and I'm happy for it and then they're like this like this conversation that I'm having with you but you are like still intact there's dudes that I talk to that are in serious things and, and they they've spent We've spent, say, I'm 38, close to your age. So, but oh, you're 35. I'm mm. 38. So, they, we've spent the last 20 years, say, after school. I've, and I, I'm, I see a big difference in my skill set and their skill set. And I, I always, you always think, and I, I work in that field. You know what I mean? I always think, and I, fuck, has this person been compensated for? Because I look at the skills that I've had and my own talents that I have which I was able to feed by, by, you know, doing the appropriate training, so, so to speak. And I look at the last 20 years and I think, how, w- w- are you compensated for not having these skills? It, th- does that make sense? So say, for example, some of the guys that haven't got a qualification, look, well, exactly what you're saying, haven't got a qualification, haven't got a whole bunch of these things. And it's really become apparent to me like what's happened like my life in 20 years and their life in 20 years and a lot of these guys haven't been able to capitalize on Mm. it and it's just a real inverted thing for me it's funny no not funny but because like i said when i was 15 16 i was like yeah this is not going to work out for me like i I continued to play sport but there was there's a there's a gap there was a big talent gap and it's it's real (laughs) you know but then in in other areas i i also think like fuck these guys not even compensated for it Mm. it's it's bad you know the ufc i think is nrl is i i I don't have enough of an uh, experience with it just i've worked with a lot of football players and i see it but the ufc and the nrl i see a lot of similarities in that like i see a lot of these guys that are very very good athletes and they live in the limelight for a while and then when they're done, people don't even know about them anymore. Do you know what I mean? And that's the other thing, because then they hold up, a, I don't know, Darren Lockyer, and they go, no, look how successful he is, and da-da-da-da, and you think, dude, that's like one of the best dudes of all time. Mm. What about, I could name you 20 dudes that you went to school with or whatever, that, what about them? Do you know what I mean? Like, what happened to them? They played three or four years and had their leg leg bent backwards never walk again properly and you never ever hear of them again ever you know and I, I don't know it's just it's just a funny thing for me like that that um I, I wouldn't do it now do you know what i mean like i was thinking about this the other day like if i had a son like I, i'd be like man probably not i wouldn't want him to obviously if he's fucking built like me i'll definitely tell him not to <laughs> but even if he wasn't it's sad because I like rugby league and I like combat sports and there is an inherent danger to them. But I look at it and I think like the compensation and the sacrifices that people make, they're just, it's just not worth it. Yeah. I th- yeah, I, 100% with you on that. I don't think the compensation nor the, the, 
looking after them afterwards, it's 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 just not there, you know. Um, especially for the the dangers of the combat sports and, and the contact, you know, the 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 toll it takes on your body. Like like you said before, you wake up some point hurt, <coughs> sore, and you know you've stopped playing. How many sutures you had? Me, I've been I've been very fortunate in my career. I've only had um, I think three surgeries, three. You had your your hand how many times? I've had two in my hand and uh, one in my jaw. And your legs? No, no, no surgeries. Lucky. Yeah, I've been lucky. Touch wood. But that's still three surgeries. You're only 27. Yeah. I um, yeah, I've been I've been lucky. You know, um, <clears throat> if you had if I had to ask myself like, would I do it again? But you're still young. Yeah, you're that, still that's, in that's, your that's career. What I say. Like, I, I'm still I'm still doing it. Like, I'm still. No, it's different perspectives. Yeah. It's just an interesting. Give me a little bit longer. Because you you yeah. played at the at the Ask pinnacle. Me at twenty seven, and I'm like, hundred <laughs> percent because I'm playing Origin and for Australia. Yeah, you know, hundred. Yeah, like, yeah, that, that's what I mean, and that's yeah. why when when I say to you when I when I when um like when you say twenty one and you look at it and, and I'll go, I go, I I would swap my my lifestyle for with Will's. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Blah, 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 because, you know, say, if we're the same age, say you were 22 and I was 22, you were playing first grade, da, 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 da. I was going to uni and doing personal training. Do you know what I mean? And I would be like, I would swap with Will like this. But then when I see some guys, not you in particular, but people, yeah, yeah. 20 years later, I think like, fuck, glad I didn't take that swap. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, granted, there's a lot of people might not be, might, didn't play first grade and aren't in my position either. But um, it's so different, I think, the reality, and people don't understand the day you're out of the spotlight, people forgot. Like, the day you're gone, people just, they, they don't even know anymore, you know what I mean? They don't care. They, um, they really don't. And it's, um, you know, I've spoken to a few boys since I came back from the Super League. So I played in the Super League for the last three years, and then coming back... So you played in England, eh? Played in France for one year and then England for two years. And then coming back, hearing some of the stories about retired boys and how they it was like their their total image or whatever was just rugby league. And now because that's gone, like they've spiralled into like a deep depression because no one recognizes them on the street anymore or no one will come up and say hello or you know it's so fickle too eh for an autograph and it's you know i've i've never been you've you've got people that love it that are in that that play the game and love that attention and um that are all about it but you know i've i've never been you know i hate going somewhere and you know you know, people staring and, um, or, you know, they might walk up to you and say hello, like, that's, that's all right. But if you, um, if you're out just trying to have a meal, like, you know, when I was with <coughs> JT, like, you know, I'd, I'd hate to be in issues. Like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, um. Yeah, but he can't sit down and have a meal. He can't, no. Nah. Because people just. Yeah just come up to him at all times yeah, yeah but it's yeah I, I think what i'm getting at was it's strange to me to see that you know people um you know were all about the fame and or not so much fame i, I, I don't know if you call it fame but it's only attention attention yeah because it, it isn't like some um level of fame that transcends that's, that's like you're, you're, you're popular yeah. on the east coast of australia exactly Th that's what a lot of the i feel sorry for a lot of the rugby league players too in that sense because I've, I've worked with different teams and different things and with different stuff and like when i'm talking to them now i'm older and i see it like say when i see a dude and he's like 21 22 years old i think like dude you're like a kid man like you're like a kid that somebody won the, who won the genetic lottery worked hard and somebody just gave a bunch of money and sometimes I'm looking at him and like they're just talking about some other shit, but I'm just looking at him and I think like, dude, I want to explain to you, first of all, it's not that much money that you have. It really isn't. Um, and if you get injured, you're fucked. And like, 
you just play football. You know, you're not you're not out there curing cancer, and you're not even famous off the east coast of Australia. Exactly. Which yeah. which I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying the truth. It's the same as with the fighters, and I hear the way some of the fighters talk, and the way like the media around that fighter. Like if if he's what's hot at the moment, the media will be like, he's the greatest of all. He's the best. Like you listen, he's a genius, and the guy loses, and they don't even talk about him. They're talking about somebody else. Yeah. And I think this guy is not a fucking genius. This guy is probably maybe of average intelligence and can string a sentence together. And he happens to be good at bashing people in his undies. You know what I mean? And that that's it. Like, Sorry, mate. On, sorry, mate. Rob's like, no, I'm, I'm fucking something else. Come on, mate. Gee, yeah. what is it? And that's it. That's all you are. And, and if you can't, if you can't understand that, you're going to have a real hard time when you have to transition into normal life. Sorry, Rob. You, you're the exception. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I needed that. Will, Will, did you have anyone around you back then that was asking what you were going to do after football? Did you have anyone that was, do you remain close to you, saying, are you, are you planning for after football? Because I think I was talking to you the other day and you said Kari's the first job out of football you've had. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Kari's the first job that I've had. I'm 35 and I've been there for four months. Um, so straight out of school... Straight down to Paramount at 17 um, and then thrown into the full time squad. Um, so, this is your first job? Yeah. Outside of football. Yeah. yeah no, no, but it's like, it, I, I, I get what you mean, like, yeah. even more so because, like, it just hit oh, me I then. I don't even see 40 as a job, like, because yep. it's not to me. Like, so, in all them years of football, did you have anyone that was, do you know what I mean, working with you about after football or yeah, concerned you, about what you yeah, were? Yeah, you'd always have, you know, your managers um, saying, you know, this is not going to last forever. Um, but it's through one in one ear so at the other. About, yeah. You know, like you think it, it really is going to last forever. But yeah. then, yeah, you start get injuries and injuries and then you start doubting yourself, am I going to be the same player again? Am I going to even be able to play again? Like I was told that after my backup that um, I wouldn't be able to play again. Um, and you know I was blessed enough to play another three, three, four years after that. But yeah, <laughs> it just goes through one ear out the other. Yeah. And so you didn't. I think you don't think you took it serious on planning no. for after football. Is it is no. it hard because um, like it's it's not just you. There's like the other boys in the team, and then like you see them not given a uh, like really caring, and you're like, well, he's not caring. And then, you know, he's kind of all... Yeah, we're going to be right. Yeah, you kind of all circulate that that off each other. Like, oh, whatever happens, happens. You've got maybe three or four of the boys that are switched on that that are actually, you know, doing studies, doing, like, um, uni courses. And the rest are just, you know, live day by day, mm. training session... By training session, just yeah. rock up. And you know something that I see as well. Like I see that with the fighters and I see it with football teams that I've worked with and that. And I see like, like people, <laughs> people don't get this as well. Like, and it makes now when you say, oh, at thirty five you got your first job, you know, and you've been there for four months, etc. But I look at like the way they they behave because they're in this like little microcosm that's not real. And uh, so, say for example some of the partying some of the stuff and then some of the talk and the way that they talk and um some of the practices a lot of the practices around women as well and i'll watch it because i'm around them a lot of the time you know like obviously with rob and with other fighters that we have and with different football teams that i've worked and they'll say stuff and people you know people go ah boys will be boys kind of thing and i think it but you know what dude there's like a 21 year old kid or a 19 year old kid that if um I don't want to name it. If 28-year-old Willie Tonga, when he was at the top of his game, is saying, yeah, that's okay for you to do that, this 18, 19-year-old kid is going to go, yeah, that's fucking, that's fine. That's perfect behavior. But then, like, outside of that football club, you're nobody, mm. you know? And if you treat someone or you do that, like, you're going to get done for sexual assault. You're going to get done for assault. You're going to get done for... Fuck this verbal abuse. You're going to get done for all of those things. You know what I mean? 
And I feel, I'm not even trying to vilify them because I feel for those kids because they're young, they don't know any mm. better and they're just copying the boys that, are, that had copied the boys as well. Not just in the football teams, in, in fighting and that because it's all fun and games while you're saying those things and you're selling tickets and everything and da-da-da-da-da and the promotion's making money or you're scoring tries or whatever. The moment that you're no longer doing that and you behave like that, you you go to jail. Do you know what I mean? Like you'll, you you can't act like that in normal yeah. life. And you know, it's I'm ashamed to say it, but you know that was me. I was I was in that sort of. But it's not even bubble. to be ashamed about. The worst thing for you is that you guys are in a fishbowl. If I do it, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to care. Yeah, I, I guess it's it's coming from you know the way I was brought up. You know, like I wasn't brought up. Um, you know, I was brought up in a Christian home. Um, you know, mom and dad, they were, you know, obviously, you know, don't drink, don't swear. Um, and they were strict on us. And then moved down to Sydney um, and then made it. Well, I got, I was playing Origin at 20, you know, for Australia at 21. You know, that's. You still it's crazy when, when i when i look at kids like that when i see that kids playing now i'm thinking that's so young like that, that's like a different world to me now do you know what i mean like um to picture that i was playing at that level in those arenas at that age it's like a totally different totally different person did Does you start did you start drinking because of the football culture you think that's what yep 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 Dude, it's, it's insane. Like, for me, as an outsider looking at, you know, at some football teams that I've, that I've worked with and that, um, it's, it's, it's mad, like, like that, that certain behaviours are even, are even like... Because, like, you know, when you, <laughs> some of the behaviours is like, nah, dude, like, it, it's different if I, if, if I was to do it. Like, if I want to do it, I'm 38 years old. I know what's acceptable or not. Do you know what I mean? But if you're a kid coming in at 17, 18 years old, if everyone else is behaving like that, that's that's the fucking norm. And everyone wants to say, no, nah, I wouldn't do it. Da, da, da. Me, like now, I wouldn't do it. Like, yeah. But if 17-year-old me went into um, first grade football, I don't know, you, you're still being raised. You're still like a kid. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you're still a, bit, a little bit more than a child. But the worst thing is when you're 15, 16, 17, you don't think you are. You think like you're an adult. Like you, you, you said, like you played in those arenas. And then when you look back and you see, see like 20-year-old you doing it, you're like, he's a little kid. Yeah, 100%. And um, yeah, it's... I showed someone a photo of, of you the other day. When you won the smashes. Oh, with the earrings and the... Yeah, and they the had the, yeah. the, uh, the $4 earrings in. in. It was <laughs> did, did you go through that, Rob? Did you go through that? No, but he looked like stage? a little kid. That's what I'm saying. Like, he looked like a little kid in that when he won the smashes. Where there was like a, a pressure of the, do you know what I mean, fighters party hard and that as well. And the, do you know what I mean, that environment of, of that you have a bit of fame and that. Did you ever go through that or...? Um, <clears throat> maybe after winning the smashes because I think that brought a bit of a highlight to your career maybe uh, yeah like I just I don't know like when, when, when I started <laughs> you know what my whole thing was like when I first started uh, mixed martial arts like and when I first went professional I think my whole thing was like as long as I stop drinking three weeks out we're good <laughs> like <laughs> Like it was, it was, it's crazy to think how I was. Like, 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 like you said. Like when I was coming up in the beginning of my my pro career, I was young, and I was just I was still learning right from wrongs. I was still learning what to do. You, you only just finished high school, and or were you, you were finishing high school for your pro debut? Yeah, you know? I, I I was finishing high school for my pro debut, and and like the 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 MMA athlete environment and culture behind it, it, it can be a little toxic, <laughs> it can be a little toxic. So, um, 
yeah, yeah, like I was, I was still learning my rights from wrongs, and then when I made it into the UFC and and all that stuff, I was still trying to get a grip on, like who I was, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go, what was what, what I was doing. It's kind of just going with the the motions, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, you know that being that young as well, like I had friends that aren't friends now. Funny enough, yeah. that um wanted to go out, we wanted to go party, we wanted to drink, you know, like, as when you're 18, 19, 20, you're going out every weekend, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's just funny how you guess, can get swept up in that, and then, you know, it's, unless you have something to remove yourself from the fishbowl, as Fab said, you're stuck in the fishbowl, and then you finally get ejected at 35, and you realise, it was all fake. The world's different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's it's like, man, this is different. Where's my friends that wanted to hit the bars and they've got five kids now and they don't want to go out anymore? And you're like, Wow, I'm free now, guys. <laughs> yeah. The, um and that's exactly how it is. It's like I'm I'm looking at the world, you know, differently now. Um, you know, with you know, the now working in Kari and then seeing the issues that, um, you know, the problems with, you know, families and, you know, the way the kids are brought up and, you know, in broken homes and stuff like that. Like, I guess you hear about it and you get asked to go to, um, you know, to go to some local footy team or some town just for a promotion. But um, a lot of times, like, you know, a lot of the boys don't want to be there. You know, they do it because it's part of their schedule because they have to it's written into their contract yeah yeah and now i'm looking at it like like you said it's because i was i felt like at rugby league is is a bubble like now i'm looking at it like none of that was real none of like that's all just fake like now i'm in the real world and um you know yeah, I just, I guess everything happens for a reason, but, you know. It, do you I have regrets associated to your to your rugby league career? Like, as in, like, do you, like, you know, you said you wouldn't do it again, but do you, do you feel like a, a thing where, because you, you, you're obviously an introspective, intelligent person. You're not, like, just, like, so do you, do you have a thing where, like, if you had a son, would you be like, no, I'd rather you go down this path? Do you have children? I don't have children, no. Um, my girlfriend, she's American. She lives in LA. Um, and we've spoken about it. And, you know, that's... She's asked She's asked me, like, you know, would I allow our kids to play rugby league or to fight? And I'm... A massive fan of boxing and then and MMA as well and that's something that I haven't decided on yet um, you know I, it's a tough one like and with the like the head knocks that I've, I've received and that's just a like rugby league that's not even a fighter like yeah but I've, I've been, seen I've been knocked out I held that, you know, what that fucking thing called the hit shield. The hit shield, and you know, what's that guy? Zane Zane Musker is that his name? The big giant dude that plays for Souths. Oh, I'm not sure. I, anyways, there, there was a, I could see the way it was going because we were working with Souths one time, and they said, "Da da da da, da can you hold?" Oh, and I, I did everything like I was like looking like this and that to so that they wouldn't ask me to hold the, the shield. I did like, and then they said, "Can you hold it?" And I just said to a man, "Don't." don't hit me hard because I won't hold it for you. And he didn't. He was like a super nice kid, but he was like, I don't know, a hundred kilos more than is necessary for a human being, you know? <laughs> yeah. And and I held it and he was like, to him in his mind, it was like, fairy tap, fairy tap. And to me, the fucking skies parted and angels mm. played a symphony, <laughs> you know? Like, And I could feel my head rattling. So I can only imagine your shots. Yeah, they, I don't know, they tried. You've been knocked out? Yeah, I could. Yeah, I can't even knocked out cold um, four or five times. Concuss where I like still play like and I'm like you get hit 
and then you're just seeing stars and then it'll take about 30 seconds for you to come to like um yeah i can't even can't even count how many times like you know probably every five games that happens and what about um have you ever had shots where you can't remember you can't remember the game yeah like a lot yeah like there's there's been times you don't remember that you played yeah uh, how many 10 times in your I, career there's more than more than that there's there's blurs of you know um there's blurs of years um and i I haven't, I've been thinking about it a lot. Like, I really want to go and, you know, see someone about it, you know, because I, I feel that I'm starting to lose my memory. Um, and, um, you know, and I've spoken to my girlfriend about it and she's concerned. Um, I haven't spoken to my parents about it, but they'll probably no doubt hear it um, from this. But, um, yeah, it's something that, how, how bad will, the, how bad do you lose your memory um, I mean the boys that know me well would just think it's like just a joke like you know like yeah will's forgotten this or what like if I forget something you know they don't I think, you, think you, much of it you messaged me on Sunday I don't know if this has anything to do with it but will messaged me at six o'clock on Sunday saying do we have to be in a tape at eight o'clock he didn't know I didn't yeah, know, it's is, just little, just little things with that. But um, yeah, I, the, like the smallest things um, I can remember, but like like things that I should remember, I don't. Um, and you know, this is the first time I've spoken about it. Like I, I, I lay there at night for hours thinking about it like is this like where's this gonna end like where where does where does this end for me does that make sense yeah yeah like is this the start of me just losing um just losing my marbles that's and that's how i i really do think when i go to sleep at night or when i'm laying there have you had any history of like depression or anxiety um i i think that i've i've had it now that i look back but i was one of those people that when someone said that they've got it i thought i'd look at them and think um, you're soft or that's a you're just that's you just saying that as a scape like, like say <clears throat> you know not pointing anyone out but say if one of the boys in the NRL you know done something and um, and they blame uh, mental illness or you know um, whatever I'd I'd say nah that's like it's full of shit like that's that's just his way out like of getting in trouble like that that was me that was yeah but I think that there's very little known about mental illness yeah and I think even less that would have been filtered down to the players so I don't think that you can hold any responsibility for thinking that do you know what I mean like I don't like I think that there's a responsibility from people that should have that should have known better. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can't expect like what 26 year old Will to know. You know what I mean? To understand mental illness, which which none of us do. Yeah, like you know, back you know back in school, like I'd, I'd never heard of depression before. Like you know, or you know these um, mental illnesses that um, you know kids have now. Um, but they don't have but them now. People have had them. There's stuff that's overdiagnosed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you're right. Yeah, but it's but right. people have always had it. So you know when people could talk like they go, oh, um, PTSD. People, that's new. People didn't have PTSD, you know, in 
World War One, and I'm like, no, they fucking did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. we just didn't. People just didn't know what it was. You know what I mean? Um, but PTSD is not new. We just named it, but it's always been around. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? You know, back to your question. I, I definitely think that I've been, I've had you know depression in the past. Where now I can say that I I had, but up until a couple of months ago, I'd say. No, I was just having dark times, like I, after my knee surgeries. Like I'd lock myself in the house for days, and then it'll be dark, like and have no contact with anybody. Um, and still, I'd, I'd I'd say no, I'm not depressed. I'm just um, just you know a bit down, you know. I've, I've just had knee surgery, um, but now that I've looked, I've sort of looked into a little bit like those feelings that I was having I was I've ticked all those boxes that would say that I had depression Um, how many knocks a year and this is going to be interesting how many knocks a year would you say you had whether it was at training whether it was at um, at in the competition would you say where you because you don't have to be asleep to be concussed. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. him, where you were like a little bit headachey, took took some shots to the head. How many a year would you say? Where you were in? Because you uh, think of it like this: oh, oh, if you oh, were I in a boxing you're... fight, if you're in a boxing yeah. fight and you got hit and you were like a little bit funny, the ref would come over to you and you know count you, mm-hmm. give you a standing eight or you know, you're lying fifty. So. How many would you say were like standing eights? I don't think I could put a number on it because like... 50? F- 26 games in a, in a, in a regular season. Um, plus training. Plus training. Because um, those contact sessions are incredibly brutal. Yeah, some of the sessions like, you know, I, I remember... Um, you know, doing a pose sessions against the twenties. If we didn't go as hard, like it was a game, then um, you know we'd get penalised for it. So, that, like, and the twenties boys would have wanted your number as well. Hundred percent. Yeah, and you know that was. I'm talking about these were training sessions when I was at the Cowboys. You know, with you know guys like Jason Tomalolo like, coming through. He would and have so been you, so much fun to so put you, the contact you try with. To, you think, okay, he's a young um, 17-year-old. I'm going to put a shot on him. You run in and he puts you in your ass, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, I really couldn't put a number on it. Maybe 50, yeah. How many a year for you? Depends. <coughs> it, it, it's, it's super, it depends on what sort of fighter you are. I guess. No, but you personally, Robert Whitaker, how many shots a year would you say ring your bell to the point like obviously Romero rang your bell like that? Like, yeah. <laughs> how, how many people? How many? How often would you say per year that you've taken shots that it's really rung your bell? Mm, how many fights a year? Two in the you in the like, last like this year? This yeah. last year maybe. How many shots? Maybe ten times. So in a f- couple in the fight and a couple, a few yeah. in training. Yeah, probably probably like five times that last fight. Probably I I I, I guess like because I, I'm I'm counting the shots that were not blocked when I was trying to get my bearings back. Yeah, you know, because <laughs> those were free. <laughs> um, those shots and then like during the sessions, like you're not paying attention, you'll get hit. Like or, or or even if you are paying attention, a clean shot will just get through, and it'll get it'll it'll hurt. But but you as a professional fighter, you'd say ten, what ten in a year or five in a year? Probably ten in a year. Ten this year. Ten this, ten this year, year where you've had your bell rung. Yeah. Because that that was working with different football teams. That was whether it's SG ball through to first grade. That was one of the things that shocked me, man. Because I've always worked in combat sports. Working with the football teams has shocked me the amount of shots they take in training. It just fucking, it's incredible to me. 
And like as a pro fighter, these guys, I'm sure these fighters that take a lot more in their camps. <laughs> but we are very conscious about that, like, like not to take the shots in training. There's me, re, take as few shots in training as possible to be ready for the fight. You know, so he had 10 probably. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think your 10 would have been like his 50. Because some of yours in those 50, we're talking about a sleep, anywhere from a sleep to like memory loss kind of thing, like mm -hmm. you wouldn't remember it. No, I'm, like I've, I've never, during, during this year, last year, I've never been hit to the point where I'm wobbly, like except for in that Romero fight, like not at training at least. Like, and you ne even in the Romero fight, you still had like your memory. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it was kind of like a, there's different, there's different types of getting put on, put on, put on your ass, you know. Um, the ones in the Romero fight were just like, like flash sort of drops, like, um, it's hard to explain. It's like you get hit and then you're on your ass and you're like, shit, I just got dropped. I've got to get up. And then you get back up and you start, start fighting again. Like, Do you remember uh, the punch? Hey? Do you remember the punch? Like, no. No. You just like I remember everything leading up to it. Like I, I remember attacking, 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 and then I'm on my bum. That's the last thing. And I he's remember. running at me, and then I was like, but then, but I'm with it enough to pick out to make up the rest of the story. Mm. It's like, oh, obviously I've been hit, and I have to get back up now. Um, the other, the the other one which was weird in that fight was because I, 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 it's because I already took damage. I think it was in the in the fourth, maybe. Right at the end of the fourth. Yeah, right at the end of the fourth, I got skimmed on the temple, and then. That's when you get the wobbly legs, and the right my right leg went like was locking out because it was wobbly, and uh, that that's a weird feeling because like you're good, like you feel good, but your legs won't work. Like that's a funny feeling that one. Um, yeah, that's much worse than um, than the than the other than the the, the flash like just getting the flash yeah. the drops like when you just get dropped and you back up and you can fight like. That same, in the same movement, my bum hit the mat, I was back up, like initiating the wrestle, getting back up, defending myself, turning off the cage, like, and doing all that sort of stuff. Obviously, he went on a rampage and I took shots. Like, this is gonna happen. Um, but with the, the wobbly legs, like, you, you feel all right, but your legs aren't working. You know, you, you and that's, it's, that's, a, that's a weird feeling. The crazy thing though is that that will end, like, if they, if it hurts you more, it'll finish or it will only can only go for 25 minutes but you guys keep going like like i i seen kids like get knocked out and that, this was even after they said like that i seen kids get knocked out and put back on mm -hmm. to play and yeah. you 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 know people say no no it's against the rules in football now but it's that happens people go back on after they get knocked out in rugby league yeah and um you'd get a even in fighting you'd get like a 90 day suspension you wouldn't be allowed to fight or have head contact or anything. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a protocol I think they have to follow now. Um, but I've seen kids get pulled back yeah. in. Um, but even, you know, I, I remember games where I've been knocked out, taken off, and then I'm back the next day doing the same training as the other boys. It's like And it's crazy. No, the, the contact that you have in those in that, it's to me, it's insane. Like the amount of contact that there is with the players, and I think like how you not they're not like these are shots like your your brain is being affected, you know. And there's enough literature now that's especially stuff that's been done in the US with the with the NFL players and that to say look, C CT is real, like brain trauma is real. And I don't know, we just continue to do it. Yeah, I don't think. Well, definitely when you're playing, you're not thinking that. No, you can't. You that, that's you, why you you've love, made it to that point because you you're not thinking like, about it. Okay, that. you got me. Now I want to get you. Like that's that's how it is. But now that I'm older, um, you know, I I feel like I'm starting to lose my memory. Like these are things that you think about. Um, you know, once you're out of the game and you sort of you have that time to sort of look back and reflect and have you got someone you want to see like you're going to see in regards to that no no i haven't <clears throat> i've reached out to a couple of the boys um and you know they've they've given me numbers but um yeah I, I don't know i think i'm 
I'm scared to, like, if something is there or something does come up. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to know if there is something there, like, because that'll that'll mess with my head even more. So, um, you know, the boys are telling me like, you know, you should go go see someone. Like they're they're telling me go see this person, go ring this person up. But uh, I haven't gotten around to it. Or oh, I don't, yeah, don't know if I will. That's fucking scary, man. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. It's just I feel with you know with you know combat sport or um, collision like, sports. Yeah, like <laughs> we're not normal. No, hundred percent. I, I, really, I really feel that. You know, I, really, I really feel that. And then you're thinking like it's crazy to see how how much collision, but. Like I'm thinking, like, but it's I not on the player. Like it's not on the players or on the fighter. Like, say for example, Rob can't make that decision for himself. That's we're going to make that decision for him. Like, if if he was taking too much damage, I'll, I'll throw the towel in. Then he can get angry after, and we will we'll have an argument. But he he's always going to fight. Like when when he got the chicken pox and the staff, and he was meant to fight Rockhold, he still wanted to take mm-hmm. the fight. But it was up to myself yeah. and the other coaches and say, no, nah, man, you're not taking the fight. And we can, you're going to lose money and we can have an argument about mm-hmm. it, whatever, but this is what's going to happen. And like you guys at your age, especially when you're young, man, because like, like kids are like 15 years old playing Harold Matthews, their brain's not even fucking developed. Mm-hmm. It's not even fully developed. So you're at like that 15, 18 year old, 19 year old stage is like where the most, most riskiest behavior takes place. And at 17, 18, that's when the most crucial part of trying to make first grade is. You know what I mean? Like you're 18 to 21. So you're taking these kids out, their brains are not even formed. And of course you're going to say, yes, can I? But when you're 17, you're going to go watch me drive blindfolded and drunk down the highway. You know what I mean? Whatever. It's like the riskiest time in your life. So it's not up to you guys. I'm just saying the practices have to be different. Like it has to be, like we don't spar. Like he doesn't spar. Like, yeah. like a maniac you know there are gyms that spa three four five times a week and they look at what we do and go oh, oh, it's wrong because he doesn't spa like that mm-hmm. but it, it can't be because like if you put them to spa they're going to spa because like you said that type of that breed of athlete is not normal it's not normal for you to do collision sports to do combat sports so you guys are different to people you know what i mean yeah when people say oh look oh you did that for 16 years how did you do it like you know I don't know how you put your body through that but at the time that's that's normal that's that's normal to you yeah and you're you're wired differently yeah Yeah, you're wired different it's 100% and that's why there has to be there has to be people that are protecting you from you yeah you know because like if you no one's going to quit Romero when Romero fought Rob Rob broke his orbitals, broke Romero's orbitals in the first first two rounds, smashed his eyes up. Romero looked like an alien. Romero, by all accounts, should have stopped. But he was never going to stop mm-hmm. unless you put him in a coffin. You know, you have to put him yeah. out. And Rob's the same way. Like, the, the same broke his hand on Romero's mm-hmm. head. And they both kept fighting. And they would have both kept fighting mm. until it was done. But there has to be people that are looking after them because that fighters are not going to make that decision for themselves. They never, if, you know, they need someone to say to them, look, dude, this is your last fight. Like, no more. Yeah. Because the other thing is, I, I listen to people sometimes, they go, oh, but so-and-so, you're saying he should stop fighting, but look at him, he's won his last three fights. And I think, look, look your brain doesn't understand that you want to fight. Your brain just knows it cop trauma. You know, now you're going, fight again, let's see if you win. Oh, look, he won, he can keep fighting. And you're like, nah, dude, the dude can't talk mm. properly. You know what I mean? Like, he can't talk properly. You can see it in his face, like, he should not be taking those shots anymore. And he, someone needs to protect that person from himself. He's not going to ever stop fighting. You know, that's... Is that is that something that you worry about? Like, mm. you get into a stage where you fought 
that one fight too many. Yeah, definitely. Especially as I'm, especially as I'm getting older, and I'm learning more and more about brain trauma and things like that. It's definitely uh, to think like a big thing. Big thing for me is like I live this lifestyle because this is this is the path that I want. You know, I, I feel that I, I, I walk the warrior's path and I, I want to live like this. But I have to pick my battles, you know, especially when it when it comes down to like providing for my family and my like you said, my body's only got so many fights in it before it's gonna say, You've had enough, old chap <laughs> You know, and so I have to make sure that I'm capitalizing on my body and making ends meet so that I'm looked after because every 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 fight that I go into is one less. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is is just just one one less I have in in the grand total, and you don't come out the same. And and uh, you never yeah. come out the same, even if yeah, the, the the amount of stress on your body when you go through a fight, you don't understand when you play the game. Like it's just it's tremendous. You're pushing your body past a point that's normal, past the point it was built for, and um, especially especially when like the the level we play, which is so far above normal, it's um. It's it's just from a hormonal release, like just from an ad, the amount of adrenaline and cortisol that is released into mm -hmm. your bloodstream. You know the way your amygdala is firing in your brain, like just just those things alone, for you to be doing that over and over, and it's it's a lot of work. There's a lot of things that have to go into it, yeah. and, and I don't think a lot of people look after themselves. One of the things that Bernard Hopkins was saying, he goes like, "You're never the same. You go in, you won't come out the same," and uh, one fight can change you can mm -hmm. just change your life and uh again a lot of people don't one of the, i think one of the th good things with like say rob myself and the other coaches um and a lot of people say oh you, you didn't like I, I wasn't i competed a little bit in grappling and that but i wasn't i was nothing special one of one of the things that i think helps me like we got alex Prades, he fought he was alex the, mm -hmm. the guy yep. he fought Justin Fitzgerald fought as well. Um, I didn't fight. You know, again, like I said, I competed in some sports and that, but nothing, not even worth mentioning. The good, th Justin Lang as well didn't fight. John Lang's son. He didn't, mm -hmm. di didn't, didn't um, fight, but he's Rob's exercise uh, physiologist. Um, and his brother Martin was tough as hell. Justin, not so much. <laughs> um, but Justin and I... We didn't fight, so our the way I see stuff, I don't even necessarily have to even go into the the whole. Um, oh, but he's a fighter. I just know that that's not good for you, man. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I'll say to you, like, yeah, do I understand what needs to be done? Like, I can have a critical assessment and say these are the things that need to be done. But there's a point of diminishing returns to what's occurring mm -hmm. here, and it's easy for me because I don't fight, so I don't feel I'm not wired like you guys. So it's easy for me to say, hey, dude, don't do that. You know what I mean? Whereas other guys might be like, yeah, but it's fun. Do it anyways, Rob, because they, they, they're wired like you guys. Do, do, do you get what I mean? I do, yeah. I'm I, not. I, I feel like I, I played two, three seasons too long. And, but I didn't have anybody to tell me that. It, um, I'm, you know, I'm past, I'm past that. Because in my mind, I'm still thinking... I can get to that level where I want, where I want to be, or where I used to be, and mm. um, now. I and you like might, but you're taking a toll, anyways. Your b brain doesn't know the difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I worry about that a lot. I, like constantly, I'm thinking about about taking shots and stuff like that. And just like you said, and, and it compliments what Fab said. Fab said um, when he quoted that guy, uh, Bernard Hopkins. Yeah, that um. One fight can change everything, you know. And you said just then, you said you you think you maybe played three seasons too many. Can I just say three seasons is like seventy six <laughs> games, <laughs> like seventy six fights too many. I um, yeah, I, I don't know, you know. And and this is this is coming from a point where like I'm, I'm in it and I'm thinking about it, you know. I I I have that grace where I, maybe maybe yourself didn't even have have these thoughts at my age, but I'm thinking about it and. You know, it's it's so important to have people around mm. you that can that pull you out of it. Because, to be honest, I, like I could fight forever. <laughs> mm. Like I, I, I think, 
I think like even 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 if I could barely walk, I could still probably find the timing to land a good shot. You know, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah, you know, I might yeah. scrape. I by. mean, you've got his, you know, his health. Not just me, the uh, other coaches as well. Yeah, yeah, all of you guys, you know, have his health, um, you know, at the forefront of, um, you know, your minds. But with us, like, um, you know, it's just like a, it's just mm. like a rotation. They want to try yeah. and get as much as they can out of us, and then as soon as we're done. Oh, and there's a the scrap production piece. line of yeah. it. And then like, more the kids playing football. And, and yeah. Place you as yeah. soon as they can yeah. for a better player. Yeah. 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 And, and now they're coming up through bigger, stronger, faster. <laughs> you know, it's... Um, yeah, I just, What would your advice be to well, your unborn son, but now he's 20 years old and uh, he's about to sign, play first grade? Because no matter what you said to him, I don't want you to play junior, et cetera, et cetera, but... He's got your genetics, your gifts. I like how you named him Junior. Well, yeah, junior, yeah, no, yeah. not because <laughs> it doesn't yeah, have to be racist, man. Right. Like, I'm and saying yeah, because right. Right. <laughs> I out. didn't know what his son's name Where would be, so I said Junior. And he, you, you say to him, but, but he, he, he's gone through, made all the schoolboys teams, everything, da da da. He signed and now to play fucking whatever team. What would your advice be to him? It's it's funny because I, I I had a conversation um, a couple of weeks ago with a, a lady that was driving an Uber and her son just got signed with the Warriors like um, and she just moved over from New Zealand a couple of years ago but um, her son had um, was just about to sign a contract with the under twenties Warriors but she said no you're not allowed and so now he's um, He's doing, you know, he's a bricklayer or something like that. And then I thought about it, like, while I was sitting there, if my parents told me that, like, I wouldn't listen because that's that's what I wanted to do. That's what I love. Yeah, and no, so, I don't think you could stop him, yeah, but I, what I advice what, would you I give? Don't, I don't know what advice... I, I, I don't know. That's something that I'd, I'm going to have to think about. Um, and I guess the more research... Um, comes out with um, you know head injuries and, and stuff like that then um, I might have a, a better understanding of of things and might be able to tell him but that, for now it's something that I don't think I'll be able to uh, give advice What about you for Jack and John if they want to do a a, like a collision sport or a, or a fighting sport they got even though even if you said look I don't want like, like Will said even mm. you said look I don't want you to do it that, but they did it anyways and now they're on the verge of either fighting professionally or playing football professionally what, what advice would you give them I you're not going to be able to stop them yeah you can't stop kids doing anything yeah um, I think the biggest thing is just to to, to inform them I'm just going to try and, and pass on as much information that I have and that my friends have and that information that I can I can I can find so that they know the facts that they know that they know more about about the body and about health issues than I did going into it because um, it's real but when you're that young it's one you no one says to you when you're coming up oh you know the head trauma might affect you in 20 years. No one says that. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. And you wouldn't care because you'd be like, at 18, 20 years is 38, which is my age, and you think 38 is old. Yep. And now 38 is like, we're just getting started. Yeah. And you know? the people around you don't care. They don't care. Yeah. They, they, they're they all just like, oh, you're such a good fighter. Get in there, smash him. You're hard as nails. Like, no one cares about that sort of stuff. You know, so I guess my biggest thing is just for him to surround himself with smart people, smart people yeah. that care for him, and just to give give him as much information about it, you know, that I can. You know, listen to this podcast, maybe. <laughs> what about you, Eli? <laughs> if you, I, I think that's the same as what Rob just said. You got to surround yourself with the right people. That would that'd be number one. Whether it's friends, your main family, managers, everywhere, even a professional sport i guess they're hard to come by but it needs to be the right there's so many wrong people too in those sports in the collision sports and the the 
fighting sports there's a lot of wrong well, people of course because there's a lot of money in it as well yeah. so entertainment there's always going to be people who are in there for their own benefits not the benefit of the fighter or the football player so i think it's just like rob said it's got to be the right people you have to surround i think that would be a big choice being a football player to which club you're going to go to do you mean um a management club, i think yeah, is a big one some clubs would look after players better than others um other clubs and managers and that I think would be a really important choice so as a father I think I would like to have some input or do you mean be present in them choices but I don't know if anyone would listen to their father old man all right I'm gonna we're gonna wrap this up but I just wanted to ask you well what's what's on the horizon for you what what, what are some what are some of the plans so you're working with Kari you got any other projects you're doing this surf for in in fitness doing this surf for yeah um which is uh so Next year, we're going to be rolling out programs that are targeted at, um, at youth, um, you know, trying to get them active, trying to get them um, engaged back into, you know, sport um, or healthy living and lifestyle. Um, so, yeah, it's just at the moment very short term goals because I'm, you know, literally just you know, just starting just starting yeah and but some pretty exciting pet. stuff man exciting but it's um yeah nerve-wracking and scary at the same time but i think like, um just from even speaking to you it seems like you are emotionally invested in that line of work like it doesn't seem like yeah I, it's it's not like you're selling cornettos that, at the beach my, yeah, like. that's my passion is is to help young indigenous and you know pacific island kids um you know, reach their potential and, um, you know, try and get them at an age where, you know, just before they, they can either go left or right. Um, so that's my passion. Um, and, yeah, but for now, just getting through this course. Yeah. How's the course going for you? Um, that's long. It's a lot of writing. Um, like I said, I haven't been in a classroom setting like this since I was 17. So um, hands cramping up, forearms are burning. But, <laughs> I reckon um, even then you barely wrote. <laughs> Wait, you did, were, you, did you do it? 17. It? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I carried a footy to school. I, didn't take a, <laughs> I, I really did. I really did. I, I didn't take a, um, a backpack or anything. And then even in year 11, 12, I'd ask for someone for a piece of paper just to write it down. Because I knew what I wanted to do, and that was play footy. Um, I was told I was, I'd never make it, but um, yeah. But you know, I think it's extremely commendable now for you to come in and do the. So everyone here has done that same, like myself included. But the three of you that did have done this course. Like Rob did the course, he did the surf four. Elo did the diploma, and you did the surf four. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome that you're doing it, though, man. That's fucking. I love it. It's. You know, it's something that, you know, I, I still want to be involved in training and, um, you know, fitness at, you know, whether it's in rugby league or, or whatever. But just the fact that jiu-jitsu is a part of this course is something that um, I, I wasn't expecting. And after finishing footy, I wanted a new challenge and I needed a new challenge and um, this is it. Now, outside of outside of uh, this course, Alex has allowed me to come to your gym and um, you know participate in the sessions. Um, have you been crushing I'm people? Will have been <laughs> destroying our membership rates? No, <laughs> no. I've, I'm getting tapped out by 80 ki kilos, 75 kilo um, young dudes, but. You know, still, I, I, I love it. You know, it's something that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a massive, you know, boxing um, MMA fan. So, um, yeah, and jiu-jitsu was something that I've, uh, over the last couple of years in particular, I wanted to get into, and this has worked out perfect. Awesome. Where do you live, Well, Local? Liverpool. Oh, so you're all local. Yep. So you can come to the gym whenever? Yeah. All right, awesome. All right. Let's wrap that up. Will, thank you so much for your time. Rob, thank you. Thank you. Eli, thank you thanks a lot. Thank you very much.